So, after a few days of preseason, almost about a week, we can look into the preseason and figure out what players and what teams have given us a little bit of an indication as to how they may play during the regular season. Considering that obviously players like Russell Westbrook haven't really played a whole lot, he's only played the one game, and then obviously players have missed out, their teams aren't 100% what they will be in the regular season, but it's just a slight indication of how they may play. So we're going to look at a few players, look at a few teams, and narrow some things down. Now, before I start with the video, obviously I have been missing for a fair few weeks. I haven't really uploaded as much as I would like, and that's to do with uni work and things I'm just getting done before the NBA season starts. So once the actual season starts, I can start posting a lot more. So with that said, I'm sorry, I'm going to get them out, trust me, but as of now, I'm just focusing on my study first, and then when the season starts, I will definitely be uploading a lot more. And I understand the views have obviously decreased as the NBA was not existent, and then now it's the preseason, so they'll hopefully pick up a little bit more. Obviously, during the offseason, the views were there, the support was there. I'd greatly appreciate if you could support the channel by hitting that like button, subscribing if you're new for more NBA content, as I'm going to start uploading more videos since the NBA season is about to kick off. So if you're ready for that, be sure to hit that subscribe button, push the notification button next to my name. And with that said, let's get on to the video. So far, some of the highlights, obviously Zion Williamson already looks like a monster. Obviously he dominated college, but we weren't really sure how he translate to the NBA. It's bigger bodies, they are better players as it's an NBA. And yes, of course, it is just the preseason. And warning now, I'm gonna continue to say that. It is just the preseason, but but you can still read some things even if it wasn't preseason because it's so different to, let's say, the summer league. Preseason is still the closest thing that we will get to an NBA season. And of course, things change as the season progresses, players become more fatigued, we have injuries, things like that. But preseason is still a small indication. So Zion Williamson looks like a monster. He obviously had an amazing game against Chicago last game, dropping 29 points in three quarters. And even the game before, he did show some glimpses of what he could be. Lonzo Ball and that Zion connection is really fun to watch. The one question that I have for the Pelicans and once again, it's just preseason, but I don't know how well they will play and mesh together as a team during the regular season. I don't know whether they'll continue to run the Lonzo Ball, Drew Holiday combination with the one and two guard. I would presume that they will, but then I would say maybe it would be better if they're trying to compete to have JJ Redick at the two and maybe Lonzo off the bench with Drew Holiday starting. We don't really know, but preseason has given us a good indication of what they may look like in the future. But the main take on the Pelicans is that Zion Williamson, Lonzo Ball connection looks good. I just don't know how they'll translate win-wise in the NBA season. Another key thing we saw was Ben Simmons hitting a three. Obviously, it's pretty cool to watch. And that changes so much for the 76ers. If Ben Simmons even just attempts threes, it changes the whole dynamic of how the 76ers will run their offense and how opposition defenders will play them during the season. I believe that Ben Simmons and his 1-3 changes everything. And I think the Philadelphia 76ers will be a very, very good team next season and could be the best team in the Eastern Conference. Even with the Bucks still being there, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But I think the 76ers on paper have a better team. So it's going to be fun to watch. And Ben Simmons hitting that 3, that was pretty cool to watch. Obviously, we're going a little bit further back, but we're looking at the Lakers and Warriors game. Pretty interesting. Obviously, the dynamic between LeBron and AD, as we assumed, is just unstoppable. It will be unstoppable through the regular season. But what I found really interesting was actually the big man dynamic with AD, Dwight, and JaVale McGee. That's going to be really fun to watch throughout the regular season. I believe that Dwight and JaVale will definitely be seen as one player rather than two separate players. So what I mean by that is that we will have to judge them as the one player. We're going to tally up their blocks, their rebounds, their points, the defensive parts of their game and their non-tangibles like the hustle, the loose balls, things like that. I believe that we're not going to judge them as two separate players, but more so as one collective dynamic player, if that makes sense. Because I feel like neither of them are really set in their position in terms of how many minutes they'll play and if they will play majority of the games, but I feel like it will be an even split between them, especially after what we saw in that Warriors game. It's going to be pretty fun to watch, especially when you've got players like Rondo and LeBron that are really good facilitators. They will definitely look to feed Dwight and obviously JaVale and Davis, so it's going to be very fun. 
The New York Knicks, they're bringing back New York basketball in a way. They're trying to be all tough. We saw Marcus Morris do his thing. I don't know what I think about that. I mean, it's just a preseason game, but he's taking it seriously, I guess. He's just making a stand and saying that he wants to bring the Knicks back to how they used to be. But I don't know about that. I think the Knicks just need to focus on winning. The next thing was the Paul Zingas and Luka combination. When I watched the game, I found it quite interesting because I thought there'd be a lot more pick and roll with Luca and Paul Zingas. Obviously, it was just the first preseason game. They're both getting accustomed to playing with each other. And obviously, throughout the regular season, that will probably change. But I was expecting a little bit more pick and pops or pick and rolls. And I guess we'll see if that happens more in the regular season, as I'm sure it will. But I was just surprised when I watched the game. I didn't see a lot. But maybe there was more than I thought. And maybe I just completely missed it whilst trying to watch three games at once. But then again, Paul Zingas by himself looked really good. Obviously, it's his first game back in about two seasons, which is just crazy. Coming off an ACL injury, he looked pretty good for his first game back in his first run with Luca. I did enjoy watching him. It's good to see him back on the floor. So that was something positive at least. Tyler Hero for the Miami Heat. He played alongside Jimmy Butler and the rest of the crew, but I thought it would be Jimmy Butler that would be the most exciting to watch. But this kid, Tyler Hero, is an absolute stud. I think he'll be a very good player for the Heat. I said this ages ago in all my videos relating to the draft, but Hero really surprised me. I thought, yeah, okay, Summer League, I get it. You can drop 20, 30 points a game. But he was doing this in the preseason as well. It's going to be interesting to see how many minutes he gets during the regular season and if he can continue to play like this. But in just his first couple of preseason games, the second game he started off really hot, hit six straight points, didn't really do much for the rest of the game. But in his first preseason game with majority of the team, like Goran Dragic, Jimmy Butler, Winslow, Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero was the guy that stepped up. He was able to create his own shot. And it wasn't just his ability to create his own shot, it was more so the fact that they would give him the ball with time running down and he would create his own shot when there wasn't much time left on the clock. And that is a great sign of a good shooter. And that was something that I was really excited to see from him. Just his shot making in general, with tough coverage, he was able to stay on balance and hit shots. So that was really exciting and really positive for the Heat. He was able to use the pick and roll very well. His defense looks pretty solid. His playmaking really surprised me, but yeah, once again, his ability to create his own shot was really good, and I'm excited to watch Tyler Hero. Just like Tyler Hero, we have another young player, Michael Porter Jr. He only played 16 minutes, and he only really entered for about half the game, but when he did play, and he actually took his shots, he was very, very good. He played like a guy that's been in the league for a while, even though this was his first ever game in the NBA, and yes, of course, preseason game, but still a game against NBA players. He played well. His shot selection was good. He hit shots. He took some tough contested shots and still made them. It's going to be very fun to watch him throughout the regular season and see how he develops even further. He's a guy that could have been a number one draft pick had he not been injured. So I don't know how he's going to play on the Denver Nuggets, but I think his talent is there and I think he's a very unique talent that could take the league by storm. And even in just his first preseason game, I noticed that he still reminds me a little bit of Kevin Durant. Not in the way he plays, but that high contested shot making ability. He still has that ability. And the last thing I want to talk about is that James Harden, Russell Westbrook combination. The combination itself, as expected, wasn't really clicking. Obviously, it was their first game together, first preseason game together. It wasn't exactly how they'll play during the regular season. Westbrook was a little bit off with his shot selection. He turned the ball over a lot. James Harden was trying out new moves, hitting step back threes, obviously how he's done throughout his whole career, but attempting more so the Euro step three, which he's now implementing in his game. That was pretty interesting to watch, but the combination between Harden and Westbrook hasn't clicked as of yet, and the Houston Rockets will actually play tonight, or basically when everybody wakes up, the Houston Rockets will have played. And I don't know if Westbrook and Harden are playing, but if they do play, hopefully they will. It will give us a little bit more of an indication to see how they play together and if they play together in this game. Because the first game together didn't really click for them. So in this next game, we're going to see how they play. And hopefully it's a good sign if you're a Rockets fan and just a fan of the NBA in general. It didn't really look like they were playing as a dynamic duo. And obviously they can make the playoffs with just James Harden alone. But if they want to go any further in the playoffs and want to actually try to make the finals this season, I feel like that Russell Westbrook-James Harden 
duo needs to click immediately because the Western Conference is so strong. But obviously, it was one preseason game. It's going to be interesting to see how they develop even further. But as of now, those were my takes on the preseason so far. Let me know what you guys thought about the preseason so far. If you guys agreed or disagreed with any of this, let me know down below in the comment section. I greatly appreciate it.